Hey gang, now that one tank is emptied and the other is refilled, let's continue with part two. So I was going to tell you when the, the tide <laughs> came in the other night, Oh yes. I was sitting on tide. my bed. I wasn't mm -hmm. in bed yet. Mm -hmm. I was sitting on my bed, just going through my iPad, but not doomsday scrolling. Okay. You know, one of the things I'm <laughs> trying to do now is at the end of the night, mm -hmm. you know, just get away from the computer and okay. you know, go unwind. Even if I'm doing something work related, I was actually doing some research for a pitch that I'm sending to an investor. And, Ooh. uh, and so I thought, well, I can do this on my iPad. Mm -hmm. I took matrix in the bed with me and we just sat there and, and he laid up against my thigh and I'm doing this stuff and, and my phone goes off. It's a text message from my neighbor. She says, we're out back. Come check on us. Come, you know, something. She didn't tell me what was happening because she knew damn well I'd be nosy and want to, want to come out and see what the hell was going on. Mm -hmm. And this was like, this was like almost 1030 at night. And like, what the fuck does she want at 1030? That's exactly <laughs> what I said. Because they're, they're kind of, unless they're watching like Monday Night Football or, or the hockey game, they're usually starting to wind down themselves by that time. Mm -hmm. And so I put, you know, slides on and, and shorts because I'm, you know, actually, no, I was on top of it, so I wasn't undressed yet. But, you know, I throw a shirt on and I walk out back and I look and I see the docks, the floating mm -hmm. dock throughout the whole canal are way high. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy shit. That's why mm -hmm. she wants me out here. But yeah, our neighbor's <laughs> boat is on a boat lift. Mm -hmm. Water was so high, his boat almost floated away. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he my goodness. Tie it down. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. He, I mean, so... he, he also raised it higher. He had, he had a little bit more that he could you know, take a little bit of the slack out of it and, and raise it even higher still. But, you know, he was up out of the water and would have been up out of a normal high tide. But wow. we could see his, we called him and said, Hey, come out, check your boat. Yeah. Did you uh, stay up then most of the night watching the water level? Shall we say? I stayed up for like about another hour, hour and a half, I think. And I thought that's what, that's what was going to happen. But I saw it definitely receding. And mm -hmm. by 5.30 in the morning was the next low tide. Mm -hmm. So that was, you know, kind of close. The next high tide after that was like 3.30 in the afternoon. So it was a good 10 hours before um, the next big tide change. Um, and it's not like an instant thing. It's not like, right, you know, right. Tide, it, it's a constant, as the phrase right. goes, ebb and flow. Yep. But, uh, I mean, still to... If that was a high tide going to a low tide, it would still still be a lot of time where that water is up, potentially doing a lot of damage, like the flood levels, yeah. um, versus you know being down to a normal level. Well, very good. I'm glad you escaped any real damage, and hopefully your yeah. neighbors escaped any real damage as well. That's really good. But it's been an interesting yeah. week in a variety of ways. Absolutely. Another thing I thought. Another thing I thought we might comment on which is in the news and then i have a personal one from my daughter amy which i thought would be fun to talk about but another one in the news has to do with the presidents of harvard and the university of pennsylvania yeah one of whom one of whom has now resigned uh over her unwillingness i suppose to say that to say that anyone saying that what Jews should be murdered was unacceptable on campus, unacceptable free speech. And the other president, the one at Harvard, I, I just saw on the news before we started today, uh, the, the university has lost a billion dollars in donations as a result of her, what they figure insufficient answer to the question. So do you have any thoughts about that? This is it is it acceptable free speech or not? Saying that Jews should die mm -hmm. is maybe acceptable free speech, mm -hmm. but it's not going to be without repercussions. How do you think it could have should have been answered? Or maybe you didn't see enough of their testimony. 
I didn't see I didn't see any of their testimony, but but I, I and not knowing you know if I was the president of either of those universities, mm-hmm. if you're going to be providing, as so many of these so-called liberal schools do, because we all know Harvard and Yale are liberal, um, if you're going to be providing a safe space mm-hmm. for all points of view, there's still got to be rules to the game. And you I just right, literally right before I logged on to to see if you were in the studio, I put a text on or a, a comment on a YouTube mess or YouTube video for a political pundit, fellow colleague of mine who's much more popular than I am, uh, David. a conservative guy named Ben Shapiro. Oh, who's, Ben! Who's Jewish. Yes, yes. Very far Governor right of now. Pennsylvania. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, Oh, not Josh Shapiro. Sorry. Yeah, gotcha. yeah, yeah. No, no. This is Ben Shapiro. He lives out in L.A. Gotcha. Uh, at thirty-eight years old, I think, Jewish, uh, and like conservative Hasidic Jewish. Like he wears like normal street clothes on TV, and other than that, it's usually like all black. Okay. Um, his wife's name I can't even pronounce. Okay. Um, you know, very. Uh, um, she's actually not Israeli. She is. Oh, where is she? She's like, uh, I want to say like Turkish or Greek or something like that. Mm-hmm. She's not Israeli. She's, she's, but she is also Jewish. They've got, she's, she's 38 years old. They've got four kids. Okay. And knock yourself out, dude. But uh, yeah. anyway, he <laughs> is very for the one state solution. He's, he said they had their chance. They couldn't do it. To an extent, he's right. You know, Gaza and other areas were governed by Palestine, but they lost it almost immediately to Hamas. And my retort back to him was that, and because he, he keeps along, he, he would not like David Beckmeyer. He keeps, you know, stowing the, uh, you know, poking the anger uh, coals and, and keeping that fire burning. Whenever he refers to Palestine, he refers to Hamas. And granted, wow. that's who the IDF is fighting right now. Right. So I get that. But when people are calling for a ceasefire, I believe that's Palestine. Right. And the people who support Palestine. Right. Right. And what I think, what what I would have helped out with, you know, as far as like security forces with the university, uh, relationship with other law enforcement partners, is the ability for pro-Palestine students Mm -hmm. to safely and non-violently rally, not demonstrate or protest. Because it's all, again, about articulation it is. and marketing. Yes. And pro-Jew and pro-Palestine, hopefully, together. Mm-hmm. Because isn't that what you're going to have to do anyway? If you're really going to achieve peace, mm-hmm. you sit down together. First, step one, talk. Step two, resolve. Mm-hmm. And step three, Forever, happy, ever, ever, ever after. <laughs> happy, ever after, yeah. Um, one of my friends on, uh, I know through St. Pete down here, he just recently moved to, I think, the Space Coast of Florida or wherever. Um, his Facebook profile pic, he, you know, you'll figure it out in a second. He's also gay. Uh, his Facebook profile pic is this shirtless, good looking Arab. With like the, like the sickle, like the Turkish flag, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. painted in black on his chest, hmm. holding hands with presumably his partner, a good-looking shirtless Jew, with the Star of David, painted on his chest. And it's like they're making a political statement, like yeah, you know, we really can live together. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Huma Abedin. Hillary Clinton's assistant mm-hmm. was married to um, Anthony Weiner, 
Mm-hmm. She's Muslim. Mm-hmm. And and he's Jewish. Mm-hmm. And her family did not come to the wedding for that reason. Mm-hmm. Now they're kind of going, we told you so. Mm-hmm. But, you know, that wasn't a violence or a hatred on each other. That was his own yep. yeah, judgment yeah. and for performance. Mm-hmm. <laughs> or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But uh, so, yeah, I, would, yeah. I would be very supportive of both sides in the appropriate manner. I mean, well, there's I Jews the, saying that every there's Jews yeah. saying that every Palestine should die, and mm-hmm. Ben Shapiro, who is not for a two state solution, tries to articulate you know all kinds of bullshit. You know, Jews were in that area for thousands of years. Palestines were forced there. Uh, Palestine is actually from the word Philistine, which was a slur, this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, dude, you're talking about a thousand plus years ago. Mm -hmm. If the Palestines are over being called a slur, maybe you should be too. Mm -hmm. And get ready for your neighbors. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, anyway. I guess my well, common sense is why I don't have millions of listeners. <laughs> well, I just, you know, I just wondered how one can articulate, as you say, the idea that certain things should probably not be said, like shouting fire in a crowded theater. Yeah. And still maintain the first amendment. Well, I, I, not only that, but I think a lot of it is also, uh, the political correctness of the issue as well. It's cool to be, I just, I just, yeah, I just wondered how they could have said it better. Oh, cut out the violence and cut out Hamas easily. That's not hard either. And and that's what I was saying about, you know, this, this one lady, you know, the, well, both of them allowing too much. I'm like, come on, really? Well, what the, they the were best... asked for specifically that they could not or would not answer was, are you condemning? Can you say that kill that, that the words killing Jews is inappropriate, is wrong? will not be supported on Harvard and University of Pennsylvania. I mean, Stefanik, I think that's her name, uh, was intentional in saying, this is what I want you to condemn, these words. And they could not or would not. So got the one yeah, fired. That makes the other. no sense. Yeah. That, that makes I no mean, sense. Yeah. Anyway, I just yeah. wondered if you uh, had uh, seen it, if you had... Penn. The lady from Penn either resigned or was fired by the board or whatever. Mm-hmm. And uh, the lady at Harvard did not. And Correct. regardless of, you know, her stupidity, that I, I got to, you know, I've always said, I hate seeing a CEO resign under, you know, amid a, a, a crisis or some somebody, you know, as I've said before, stepping on their dick. That's when it's your turn, your time to go to work. Mm-hmm. quitting is not what you're supposed to be doing in that moment. It's supposed to be cleaning it up and making things right. Yeah. But do you think they had any choice? I mean, it was either quit or we'll fire you. Fire me. Mm-hmm. I, I've got gotcha. I, I fire. Me. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yep. It's I'd time rather to have stand. those words because yeah. I stood my ground yeah. because, you know, I, I'm not admitting I did anything wrong. Yep. Yeah. Fire me. Yep. Fire me. And you just gave me a really big soapbox with a great sound system. <laughs> That's true. The other thing I thought we might talk about, which I found interesting, uh, was some, a quote that Amy sent me. And I don't know how serious, Amy, my daughter, yep. I don't know how serious she was in asking the question, but I just loved it. What she said was, quote, did you exchange a walk-on part in a war 
for a lead role in a cage. Now, I don't know if she was responding to the, the situation we were just talking about, you know, those what that the, the president of University of Pennsylvania, uh, what she exchanged a walk on partner war by resigning. Yeah. OK, I don't know if Amy, my daughter, was, you know, talking about current events, that situation or some other or whether she was asking her mother. Did you exchange? a you know, walk on part in a war for a, how did I say lead it? A lead role in a cage. Did you see my text back to you when you sent me that? Did you see the Go text ahead. I sent back to you when, when, when you sent me that uh, earlier this week or over the weekend? Uh, not, no, I did not. Yeah, that is a line from the song, Wish You Were Here. By Pink Floyd, Pink yes. Floyd. Yeah. Okay, yeah. But anyway, I was wondering if she wanted my answer to that. And it was funny because I could answer her immediately. Absolutely, yes. I. What? I exchanged a walk-on partner war for living in a cage. Yeah. Because how so? Um, how so? Yeah, well, I be well, I became part of a bureaucracy in teaching. Yeah. I towed the line in terms of, you know, not trying not to offend anybody, whether it be parents or students or administrators or whatever. I um, have not participated in any huge protest movements, made my <clears throat> position known, you know, more subtly or more privately. But so, yeah, I have exchanged my role for a part-time role in a war for being in a cage. And yet I also had to laugh because one of my favorite things in Shakespeare, in King Lear, was at the end of King Lear. I mean, he's lost everything, if you know the story at all. He's lost everything. Yep. And his daughters, his terrible daughters, you know, uh, threw him in prison. And also through his favorite daughter, Claudia, in prison with him. And what he says to her at the end is, we will be like birds in a gilded cage. And we'll watch the comings and goings of the court. And we'll watch who's bashing one person and who's bashing the other. And we'll just sit here and kind of be amused at what's going on in the world. As opposed to being free and fighting everybody. He decided that they would be like two birds in a gilded cage. And that's the image that came to mind when she asked me that question. So I answered her readily. She hasn't responded to that at all. And I wondered if you saw yourself as being in such a cage or if you became a walk-in heart walk in as part of being part of a war what how do you see yourself in that question uh, <laughs> as a baseball umpire mm -hmm. especially earlier in my career i was a bit of what we call a red ass and i was okay. a little fiery okay and once i got more experience i didn't need that as much mm -hmm. um but it can also be interpreted as having uh, acquiesced to other aspects of what's acceptable in higher levels of baseball. Mm -hmm. Definitely not in the Secret Service. Mm -hmm. I know that because I spoke up, I was not somebody's buddy and promoted and, and whatever. And so, yeah... I'm still out there on those front lines. <laughs> yes, you are. As opposed to a corner office. As you know, definitely uh, you are. Um, but. Uh, and was that a conscious choice? And were you aware when you spoke up that you'd end up 
maybe being relegated to a role that you weren't particularly happy with? Um, I'm glad that I stood up for what was right. But a, a, one of my favorite bosses um, before the Secret Service played for the St. Louis Cardinals, um, then mm -hmm. St. Louis Cardinals of the NFL. Um, big dude, Coach Davis is what we call Billy Davis was his name. And he, during one of my pissing matches, um, not with him, because that I knew better. He was a bigger boss. Um, he said, Jurgs, when you get something like this and you get that notion to fight, step back and ask yourself, is it worth it? Mm -hmm. And when you say yes, take another step back and ask yourself again. Because once you throw that first punch, mm -hmm. there's no taking it back. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what David Beckmeyer kind of teaches. He doesn't say not to get angry. His exact words when we interviewed him were to pick and choose your battles. Mm -hmm. And if I would have done that better, I would have had better assignments. I, mean, I loved my time with Hillary Clinton and, and Bill Clinton, but I went there to protect the sitting president of the United States. I went there to protect the sitting president of the United States, not a former one. Mm -hmm. And that's the A-type personality and ego. Mm -hmm. When I knew that wasn't happening, I still made the best of my time with the Clintons. Mm -hmm. And they I've been off their detail 13 years. I'm still one of her favorite agents. Um, so I, to an extent, I would have done things differently, mm -hmm. but I'm not ashamed of anything that I've done. Mm -hmm. And on another hand, you know, maybe I would not have done things because I actually think about this frequently. Would I have done anything different? Yes. And on the other hand, the answer is no, because I love my life now. Mm-hmm. You make that one little change mm -hmm. that alters everything else along that path forever. Mm -hmm. And maybe I wouldn't be in the Tampa Bay area, again, not revealing my actual address, mm -hmm. uh, in the Tampa Bay area with two jet skis and an adopted son and a house on a canal. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe I'd still be in an apartment that I don't like or can't afford doing shift work mm -hmm. or pushing paper at headquarters. That's probably where you would have been. Yes. Yep. Yep. So, yep. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I think the other thing is now um, you had said something that, that, that stuck out. And, and so I don't want you to think badly of, of yourself. You had mentioned right. about how you, you kind of, I, I forget exactly what you said, but you kind of did in your own way or, or, or not as direct or, or mm -hmm. uh, and I see that with your support, not actual activity of um, Boy Your Town Forward mm -hmm. and that you stayed limited again, mostly because of your also having a relationship with Studio B, mm -hmm. but don't think that the work that you've done in the background mm -hmm. isn't just as important as stuff being done up front. Yeah. I don't, thank you for your consideration. I don't feel less than let's put it that way. Yeah. Now, now the other thing also, go ahead. Well, I was just gonna say, cause if we got a security plan and I'm the guy out on a perimeter mm -hmm. that nobody knows is even there. Mm -hmm but I let in a car bomb mm -hmm. because I don't sweep yep. it properly at my checkpoint. Yep. I They're going to know yep. then. Yep. And so is Congress. Now I, you know, I feel really good about who I am as, or who I, yeah, I feel pretty good about who I am and what my life is, has been about because it's been, um, 
what do you say, true to my beliefs, true to what I think is really important in life. So I don't feel that. But I think <clears throat> the question came also this week as I watched a lot of MSNBC, and I do. I watch a lot of MSNBC and became really aware about how much these days they are, um, what do you say, concerned about our former president's decision to be a dictator on day one. I think they, as um, a liberal station, are feeling the heat that if, in fact, he is elected, they will be canceled immediately and maybe, you know, hung out to dry in all sorts of ways. So I thought that was kind of interesting and led me to think about it. it, it my daughter's question led me to think about that, how that ties into her question. So. So. I don't think Donald Trump's going to be elected. I know you don't, but I, I do. That when we had <laughs> Beckmeyer on here, I, I said, yeah, and the reason I even did an episode on it and up the middle. Mm -hmm. If you follow the money, as we say in fraud investigation, mm -hmm. overall, Joe Biden is leading him in fundraising almost, or by this point, perhaps even greater than two to one. That's so you ignore, so you ignore all the polls, all of the polls, every single one, <laughs> every single one. Oh okay. my God. There's <laughs> no, what did I tell you about moms for Liberty? <laughs> if they have the name Liberty, mm -hmm. that means they're not. Name. Yeah. Yeah. So when you hear scientific poll, Mm -hmm. what should you really be thinking? That it's made up. That it's skewed in somebody. They're calling people for whom they <laughs> know they will get a certain answer. One. Right. right. Two, the questions and the answers, your multiple guess answer, is also worded such that it's not going to be, this is going to be the closest one that I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Like, even if you like ask, are you happy? Even if you ask something innocuous, like, are you happy with gas prices? You know, of course, the answer is no. Everybody wants gas for free. So it becomes the answer. Are you happy with gas prices? The answer is no. That becomes part of why we're unhappy with the current administration. I know you can you, you ask questions. You ask questions that give you the answers you want. I get it. But not yeah. only that, <clears throat> there's also a lot of ignorance that the media is playing off of. Everybody thinks that the price of gas is above $3 a gallon. That's Biden's fault. Exactly. I realize This that. shit doesn't yeah. happen immediately. <laughs> right. You know, anything right. he does to affect the, the uh, economy doesn't take place tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Takes place this in the can... next administration. Yes. Well, possibly in Donald Trump's case, yes, because he was only there four years mm -hmm. and didn't do much to keep it. I mean, he was handed an excellent economy in 2016, mm -hmm. at the end of 2016 mm -hmm. into 2017. Mm -hmm. Screwed that up. Mm -hmm. He was handed excellent job performance mm -hmm. um, in the, the unemployment rate. Screwed that up. And yeah, well, he had to deal with COVID. Yeah, he did have to deal with COVID. And how did he do that? He called it a hoax. <laughs> and then he said to inject hydroxy bleach or some mm -hmm. shit. Mm -hmm. He was going to clean the inside of our lungs with Clorox, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, seriously? Mm -hmm. and, and so, you know, the, I, I looked for it for like an hour the other day and I couldn't find it. There was this Facebook meme. And you, you got to watch, you know, what you repost because, you know, mm -hmm. it's not really coming from sources. It's coming from somebody who knows how to operate Photoshop or Canva. Correct. Um, but there was on the left side, there was Joe Biden. He's old. He stutters. On the right side was Donald Trump. He's also old. He mumbles. <laughs> He's guilty of fraud. Mm -hmm. He's guilty of lying. 
He's guilty of adultery. He's disliked by foreign leaders. He's disliked by the country. He's committed treason. Which one do you want? And I know, you know, some so many of the supporters will say, no, the, the election was stolen. I, the thing I'm doing in bed, uh, and I've done this with the same, <laughs> with, I was had this guy in bed with me before, um, a guy by the name of Miles Taylor was from the Bush administration, at which time he met a uh, Marine general named John Kelly, who would, all both of whom would come back to haunt us all, uh, I say in jest, because John Kelly would be Donald Trump's first Secretary of Homeland Security. And he handpicked Miles Taylor to be one of his intelligence advisors. Miles Taylor was so distraught with the bullshit of the Trump administration, he wrote an anonymous letter to the New York Times that was pub that was published as anonymous. And it's kind of where some of this QAnon bullshit comes from. Who was anonymous? Well, it's Miles Taylor, and he's admitted that. And he's come out long ago since then, while the Trump administration was literally hunting him down to the point where oh. other New York Times reporters were hunting him down because the editorial board of the New York Times would not reveal how they got the article or how they got the opinion. Mm -hmm. There are so many people like Miles Taylor who have been hunted by the Trump administration mm -hmm. for speaking the truth, mm -hmm. not just, you know, making a big deal out of somebody's laptop, <laughs> but for saying banning Muslims outright is not where close to legal. Do it anyway, is what they were told. Mm -hmm. Miles Taylor, I'm, I'm, what I'm doing, the first thing I had him in bed with me was I listened to the six or eight episodes of his podcast called The Whistleblowers. And I've talked about this many times on Up the Middle to a point where it's all over my show notes. The Whistleblowers was his like eight episode podcast that ran last summer. And each episode was the story of a whistleblower from the Trump administration and the retribution that they suffered with him being episode one. Wow. One of the latter episodes was focused on the girl who is in charge of hunting him down because wow. she resigned on January 6th in protest that this is not okay to let this, to stand by and let this happen. Mm -hmm. He's since written a book called blowback, which is just him. Here's what's going to happen. Here's where it happened in history. Here's where it happened in the Trump administration. Here's what he says he's going to do. Here's what Hitler said he was going to do. It, it's, it can't be made any easier. And one of the things that just pisses him off royally are the number of Republican congressmen who still knowingly and having a confirmed receipt, or, or, or I don't know how I should say, but they believe the intelligence that they're getting, mm -hmm. that the 2020 election to use the words of DHS was the most secure election in history. Mm -hmm. Yet they still support the stop the steal bullshit. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the Lynn Cheney courage mm -hmm. to stand up and say, this is not right. Or the, uh, who was the other Mitt Romney was one of the few who stood up and said, this is not, this is not okay. Mm -hmm. And how does he know? He was the guy who oversaw the security of the elections nationwide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's the whole, I love when people talk shit about Hillary Clinton and they say, oh, well, she's a bitch, this, that, and the other thing. I'm like, I was there. She didn't do anything with smuggling children in a pizza shop. She didn't have time to. <laughs> right. Neither did I. Mm -hmm. 
Because I was too busy chasing her around the country's five cities a day. Mm -hmm. And the ignorance that is, you know, when, um, uh, what were you, oh, with like um, Biden or Trump. Oh, well, Fox News tells me I got to hate Biden, so, you know, fuck Biden. Mm -hmm. FJB. Let's go, Brandon. Mm -hmm. I love, and Bush did the same thing. Bushisms. Do you remember them? He's actually mm -hmm. on my, he's one of the, uh, the screensavers and one of the desktops. There's a, there's a portrait of George Bush, George W. Bush. And the famous quote is they misunderstand they I've screwed it up myself. They misunderestimate me. <laughs> we know what he's trying to say. I know. Yeah. He's adorable. Mm -hmm. And yeah, exactly. He originally that happened because he originally fucked up. Mm -hmm. He would I think that may have even been the one where, you know, he he, you know, his tongue got tripped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. So he started doing it on purpose. <laughs> That's a fact. Really? And nobody picked up on that. No, no, no. They chose to show it. They chose to show him as a doofus. That's too bad. Yeah. yeah. And and Joe Biden the same way. How he makes comments about Dark Brandon. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, I love that. I do too. Because if you can't laugh at it, you're doomed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. The best, the best response he's had to any of that recently was um, he was on the South Lawn of the White House, and uh, one of the reporters asked him about um, the pending uh, indictment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Talk about two words. He looked away from the reporter, looked right into the camera, smiled, and said, good luck. Mm -hmm. And turned around and walked away. Mm -hmm. I do love how he's not engaged in a lot of the silliness. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, lot of, a lot of the crap that they keep throwing at him. He just kind of either wipes it off or escapes it somehow, but doesn't engage with it. I think that's really smart. Yeah. So, uh, I would guess that we've been talking for quite a long time now. I think we got two and episodes in the can here. I hope so. And I think um, it'll be an interesting mix of subject matter uh, for our listeners for this um, podcast. I think we can title we one mixing bowl and the other one uh, melting pot. <laughs> that sounds good. Anyway, I'm Jane Stahl. And I'm Jurgs. And this is Both Sides Both Now. Sides now. Have All a right, good everybody. week. Thanks.